Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 176 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the difficulties that can be encountered when treating heavily calcified osteolarite coronary artery lesions. The patient presented with angina, he did have normal left ventricular systolic function with slightly dilated ascending aorta and a very high calcium score. Coronary angiography showed moderate lesions in the LAD with a lot of tortuosity. It was done through radial access with very difficult engagement. So to be able to visualize, we actually had to use a wire to anchor the catheter. But eventually we obtained images of the left coronary artery. There are some intermediate lesions in the circumflex into the LAD. But we had extreme difficulty with engaging the right coronary artery that seemed to have an osteo lesion. The patient eventually had a stress MRI that showed inferior ischemia without any anterior or lateral ischemia, and he was sent for PCI of the right coronary artery. This time, since we had so much difficulty with radial axis, we used femoral axis, but still engagement of the coronary artery was extremely difficult. We tried with an AL1, JR4, we could not engage. Eventually, what we did is uh, use a technique called the airmail technique. We got a JR4 catheter and tried to align it as much as we could with the ostium. And then we took a polymer jacketed wire, a C on black, and tried to advance it blindly. And eventually, the guide wire did advance along the course of the right coronary artery. Again, this is uh, the airmail technique. And this is very useful when we have a lot of difficulty selectively engaging the coronary artery ostia. It is a trial and error technique, and here we just saw the success, but it took a lot of efforts before getting into this point. After doing this, we were able to visualize the right coronary artery better, and indeed, there is a very high grade osteal stenosis. Of course, the polymer jacketed wire, the C on black, did not provide very good support, so we wanted to exchange it for a more supportive guide wire. And to do that, we did use a microcatheter. This is a Corsair Excess microcatheter. This was advanced as far down as we could in the vessel. We can see the severe tortuosity of the right coronary artery. And then eventually, we removed the C on black and inserted the wiggle wire. The wiggle wire has this wavy pattern that can provide very good anchoring and support for the guide catheter. After doing that, we predilated with a small balloon, but couldn't deliver an IVUS catheter because of the osteal disease with calcification. So we decided to use a therectomy. We advanced again the microcatheter and then exchanged the wiggle wire for a Viper Flex tip guide wire. And the whole goal here is to be able to use this wire to perform a therectomy. This is also a fairly supportive wire. And then the way we did orbital atherectomy in this case is uh, by going backwards. So what we did is we used the glide assist to go forward inside the right coronary artery. And then we came back both at 80,000 RPM. But because this is a photo vessel, we also went to the high speed 120,000 RPM, which is something we do very, very rarely. Um, we could have also used rotational atherectomy here. If we use orbital, it is better to do this backward treatment instead of doing forward treatment that can cause uh, maybe dissections because of a uh, large radius of um, spinning of the, of the crown. So after doing the atherectomy, we were then able to insert the IVUS catheter. And now we're doing a pullback, and we see the heavy calcification of the ostium of the RCA, but the calcium has been disrupted. So we did a predilatation with a 4.0 millimeter balloon that expanded nicely. And then we repeated IVUS that showed once again that uh, there is some calcium at the ostium. However, the calcium has been fractured, and we have a nice area of the ostium. For these lesions uh, that are fairly large, we ended up using a Megatro stand. This is a 5.0 millimeter stand sized based on the IVUS measurements. This has excellent visualization, but also very good radial strength. And this was deployed, post-dilated, 
We even used an Ostial flash balloon to uh, flare the origin as much as possible and facilitate future need for the engagement. And this provides a nice result. We see have um, we now have excellent backflow into the aorta, excellent flow into the right coronary artery. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that for heavily calcific or very stenotic osteal lesions, selective guide engagement may fail. But one way to engage those vessels is to use the air mail technique in which we point the guide catheter, typically a JR4 for the right coronary artery, as coaxial as we can with the ostium of the coronary artery, and then advance a polymer jacketed guide wire, essentially blinding using a trial and error approach. Once the wire goes down, then we exchange it for another guide wire for better support. There was heavy calcification in the ostium, and we couldn't deliver an naivus catheter, so we did the orbital atherectomy, but we did it in the retrograde fashion, glide assist in, and then activate, and then do the treatment coming backwards. Of course, imaging is critical for heavily calcified lesions such as this one. And then we did use uh, the Megatron stand, which has excellent radial strength and visibility to treat the osteal lesion. We did confirm osteal coverage using intravascular ultrasound, and we did use the osteal flash balloon to flare the stent struts and facilitate re-engagement of the right coronary artery if uh, this will be required sometime in the future. Thank you.